Good morning, everyone. My name is Charlie Shrum from Crypto IQ. Today is July 20th, 2018, and here is your crypto and coffee. All right, everyone. Every time I do this crypto and coffee, I'm always worried about the markets. And I'm very excited to say that finally, we've had an amazing week in the markets. The Bitcoin price is back over 7,000, and it's really exciting. And on that note, we've had the United Kingdom is moving forward on crypto regulation framework. And this is very interesting to see because every country is going to regulate crypto in whatever way they can. And usually they do it with the toll booth system, as I call it. The toll booth system is you can't really regulate what happens inside of the crypto space. People buying and selling crypto with each other, people trading crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever, digital apps, uh, autonomous apps. You can't really regulate that, but you can regulate the uh, bridges that go in and out of the crypto industry. And uh, you can do that by creating toll booths. And toll booths are creating taxes or creating certain regulations of you know, your customer policies and identification, et cetera. So everyone's going to regulate differently. Um, what, what made me happy was, unlike some other countries like the United States, in the United Kingdom, actually, the education from the lawmakers is a lot higher. So where you have US lawmakers say things like, um, we shouldn't allow people to buy and sell Bitcoin because it takes electricity from other things, which is a complete fallacy. At least the United Kingdom, their lawmakers are pretty good on education. So education is super important when it comes to crypto, and it's why we started Crypto IQ to educate people on cryptocurrency. Speaking of education, one of the largest asset managers in the world, BlackRock, which manages around $6.3 trillion in assets, has finally said that they're looking into cryptocurrency. This comes after uh, a little bit ago, the CEO of BlackRock said, we will never look at cryptocurrency. So now that totally shifted. They have developed a team within their organization where they are looking at crypto and how their uh, fund investors and managers and people that use them to, to invest their money can be involved in the crypto space. This further legitimizes and pushes uh, crypto investment and legitimacy uh, for the next years to come. MasterCard story, very interesting because for those who have followed me over the years, you know that in 2013 I tried launching a cryptocurrency Bitcoin debit card. And it was very difficult to do because how do you have a, a debit card where you spend dollars, it deducts from your Bitcoin balance. A few companies have been able to do this. Uh, BitPay has their uh, Visa card. Coinbase has their debit card. A few companies have done this. MasterCard has now said, we are going to do this ourselves. And they want a patent um, which shows that they're interested in developing the software and building out uh, a system for having cryptocurrency backed debit cards. So guys, this is not just a company that can issue MasterCards uh, getting involved in crypto. This is MasterCard themselves saying we are now going to enable people to have crypto backed debit cards and credit cards at some point in the near future. That is, if anything, short of epic. Abra, one of the uh, oldest companies in the crypto space, GoAbra.com is their website. The CEO, Bill, is a phenomenal guy. He's been an evangelist for crypto uh, for almost a decade, has been really leading the charge for the ability for people to buy and sell Bitcoin in his app with credit cards. And while many people have shied, many companies have shied away from enabling credit cards in their app, Bill says, no, we want to enable people like my mom and my grandma and my grandpa to be able to buy Bitcoin in the app with a credit card. So good job, Bill. Keep up the good work. An interesting story, someone was talking about Vitalik, uh, the founder of Ethereum, uh, earlier today and how he needs to gain some weight. Um, I love Vitalik. He's a phenomenal guy. I've known him for many years. And it's a funny story I thought about the other day when I took Vitalik to uh, Lobster Mondays in New York. Um, it was like 40 people and uh, it was just a random Monday and Vitalik came to eat some lobster and, and he didn't eat any lobster. And we're kind of joking around with him about it. And um, it was just kind of like his whole mantra and his whole mentality and the way he looked at life was so interesting. And everyone was kind of teasing him because he hadn't invented Ethereum yet. He was just some guy who wrote articles for Bitcoin Magazine and looks like Vitalik had the last laugh on that one. So anyways, guys, have a great weekend. My name is Charlie Shrem from Crypto IQ. This was your Crypto and Coffee. I'm out.